Hello boys and girls, it's Mrs. Jones again, and what we're going to do is I just ask you to solve a problem on your own and type the answer in the class kick. Well, in this video, what we're going to do is I'm going to solve the problem again with you, so that way you can, if you had any questions as to what the right answer is or how to get the right answer, you will have those answered in this video. I'm also going to show you then how to check your work to make sure that you are correct. So our last problem that we did, that I left you to do on your own, was we were subtracting 50,401 take away 35,832. And remember, we were learning how to subtract across zeros. What do we do when we can't borrow from zeros? So we're going to go ahead and start. When I have one, let's say I have one paper clip, and somebody needs to borrow two, I need to take away two. Can I take away two paper clips if I only have one to give? No, I can't. So what I have to do is I have to go to my neighbor next door. My neighbor next door is a zero. We learned that we can't borrow from zeros because zero has no value. So we have to keep going down the line until we can find a neighbor that we can borrow from. I'm going to go to this 4. Does this 4 have any value? Yes, it does. So I'm going to be able to borrow from the 4. I'm going to only borrow 1. So if I borrow 1 from the 4, that means I have 3 left over. That 1 that I just borrowed from the 4 is now going to go to this 0 to make it a 10. Now, when I do 1 subtract 2, now I have a neighbor that has some value. 10 has a value. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to borrow one from my neighbor, 10, and it's now going to become a 9. That one that I just borrowed from this 10 is now going to this one to make it an 11. Now I can begin subtracting. 11 subtract 2 is 9. 9 subtract 3 is 6. 3 subtract 8. Uh-oh, I can't do it. 3 is less than 8, so I cannot take 8 away from 3. I've got to borrow from my neighbor. Uh-oh, there's a 0. It has no value. I can't borrow anything from here. So I'm going to have to go to my next neighbor, which is 5. I'm going to borrow 1 from that 5. And so that now becomes a 4. That 1 I took away from 5, I'm going to give it to the 0, which is now a 10. Now does my 3 have a neighbor that it can borrow from? It does. So now I'm going to borrow 1 from this 10. It's now going to become a 9. That 1 that I just borrowed from this 10 is now going to this 3. So I have 13. 13. Subtract 8 is 5. 9 subtract 5 is 4. 4 subtract 3 is 1. So my answer is 14,569. That's how I solve with regrouping. Okay, I just solved this problem. Now I'm going to learn how to check my work. What I'm going to do when I check my work is I'm going to take my answer, which is 14,569, and I'm going to add the smallest number in my subtraction problem. Which one's smaller, 50,401 or 35,832? Well, you can always know what the smallest number is because it's going to be on the bottom of your subtraction problem. So I'm going to add, I'm going to do the opposite of subtract, I'm going to add this number right here, 35,832. And remember, this is how I'm checking to make sure this answer is correct. This is how I'm going back and checking my work. I'm going to do the opposite of subtract, which is add, and I'm going to add these bottom two numbers together. If, it, if my answer right here gives me 50,401, I know that I solved it correctly. Here we go. 9 plus 2 is 11. Carry my 1. 6 plus 1 is 7. 
7 plus 3 is 10. 1 plus 5 is 6. 6 plus 8 is 14. 1 plus 4 is 5. 5 plus 5 is 10. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 3 is 5. 1s, 10s, 100s. Now I have to put my comma. 50,401. Is that what my original number had when I started subtracting? It is. So because this matches my top digit up here, I know that I am correct. I solved this problem correctly.